All right, hello and welcome back to Ashback Cats. Let's play that. Today we're taking a look at Indie 500. Uh, published by Sega. It's a 3D racing game by Sega. So that's always a good sign. Let's toss in some credits and get started. How and Racing Bayside are based on fictional things. Yeah, an Ashback cat is based on a fictional cat and is not a real character. All right, let's, um, ooh. Already we are getting to the deep dark underside oh okay there we go so again i am playing this on an oh automatic please let me choose automatic okay so i am playing this on an arcade stick so we'll see how this works traditionally it hasn't but i mean you never know you never know well, it's a good thing I'm not revving my engine or anything. Uh, hello? If this was Sonic 3, I'd be doing my idle animation by now. Well, guess what? It's the future, pal. I got a new version of MAME. So let's load it up and see if this works any better in that new version of MAME. Now the uh, harsh warning intro screen uh, kind of said, no, nothing you can do will make this work. But if I listened to every sort of warning screen, I certainly wouldn't have started this channel. And darned if I'm going to let some warning screen tell me not to play this awesome looking Sega 3D racing game. Although I will say, these things are work. <laughs> those things are looking a far more dire than they were before. But I have faith. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Newer is not always better. So this newer version of Mame, well, it doesn't work, pal. In fact, at least 2014 had that slightly charming, if not slightly irritating, engine noise going on right now. But right now, I hear nothing but the lamentations of arcade lovers everywhere as we fail to play a game. But I said play, not watch. All right. Hello and welcome back to Ashback Cats. Let's watch that. That's right, it's just like you're shopping with your parents and you're a kid again, because you gotta look with your eyes, not with your hands. And so we will dutifully put the arcade stick away, although I won't actually do that, I might accidentally hit something, and let's watch the game and pretend like we're the ones playing it. Because for a broken game, this seems to uh, have a pretty sweet intro screen. You know, it's times like this that I almost kind of regret having my shader on, because... I mean, these sorts of 3D games like this, they really don't need it. This and, like, Alpine Racer, I feel like the shader almost kind of ruins it a little. I mean, you can't even really see the scan lines. Well, I can barely see the scan lines, and I'm watching source quality. You guys at home probably can't see anything at all. Maybe a slight blurring or something. I don't know. Well, I'm beginning to see how this game might be considered broken. That being said, I mean, all too often we find ourselves racing over a vast expanse of nothingness, so... Well, yeah, maybe this isn't so out of the norm. Uh, it's a shame these intro sequence, this intro sequence is so quiet. I like the ones that are so loud and fun. Well, uh, let's see, Compitech, Siltech? I don't know quite enough about racing type companies to know if those ads are real. I would assume they are not, but I don't know. Siltech sounds generic enough that maybe that's actually a name. And Hydro Oil? Probably not a name, considering it's basically a zone from Sonic, but uh, you never know. You never know. Check out the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa in what is certain to be the most historic an accurate representation of the Indy 500, which, if I'm not mistaken, takes place mostly in America and not in Italy, actually. Uh, let's see. Also, we can see that those objects in the distance are, in fact, sprites. They are not polygons. I mean, you gotta cut corners somewhere, and the crowds and distant, far-off background objects are clear first choices. You know, it's almost like we're playing the game. And you don't even have to hear me complain about, oh, I'm using an arcade stick. I can't even control the car. 
well, it's funny because I'm still using an arcade stick and I can't even control a car, but <laughs> for different reasons, you know? And, uh, oh man, look at that skybox. It's almost a shame. Like, you, you look at the ground textures and they're pretty filtered. Well, okay. You look at all the other textures, not terribly smooth. So you look at the skybox and the skybox is looking a little, uh, rough. A little pixely, I guess. Now, Sega, one of their trademarks, in addition to making just straight up good arcade games, is they like their nice, expansive blue skies. And so to see a blue sky in such a state of well, disrepair, I suppose, is somewhat disappointing, I guess. Somewhat disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, did I disappoint the game with all of my talking? Like, it seems like it's more broken than usual. I mean, it was already pretty broken. Well, I guess this is one of those instances where it's like, I'm staring at the game, game's staring at me, somebody's got to break the silence. All right, game, we'll do one final farewell. I'll try a different track, and if it works, I'll sing your praises till the end of time. And if it doesn't, uh, come on, I put, in, I put in some credits. Well, I guess all we can do now is see how high it goes. I'm betting nine. Yeah, nine credits. That's, uh... Oh, because it's four credits per credit. That makes sense if you don't think about it. So that's ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's not just one week's worth of allowance. That is two weeks' worth of allowance. My, how times have changed. Well, okay. Uh, time of death now. This game is officially done.